Today, I'm gonna to give you a list of 10 green flag characteristics that you can look for in women that make them much better candidates for commitment. These are women that, if they have these 10 characteristics, will be much less likely to be hypergamous and much more likely to be with you for the long haul, trustworthy and worthy of some level of commitment. Now, I'm not talking necessarily just about marriage, but really any kind of commitment at all. So the first characteristic you need to watch for is a spiritual foundation. Now, I'm not talking about any specific religion. You know, I know everybody's got their own special thing, but a spiritual foundation, whether it's religious or just spiritual in general, definitely makes an enormous difference. And this should be something that's pretty strong in their lives. This cannot be, you know, a casual, you know, I go to church on Christmas and Easter, or someone who um, has a vague agnostic view of, of spirituality. It needs to be some kind of a ethos that keeps them on track. Um, anyone who believes that they are the most powerful being in the universe as a human being probably is going to be more hypergamous than someone who um, has a, uh, a pretty strong spiritual foundation. So that would be a critical, critical element right away. Number two, does your sweetie have any mentors or people that she strongly admires? Um, it's really important that a woman have a compass. If she has no true north, then she will spin in circles and you will find hypergamy is her fallback. So you definitely need to find a woman who has a very strong um, admiration or relationship with someone of strong character. Very, very important. Number three, your proposed sweetie should probably have some kind of um, interests that are not related to status or finance. So she should have a hobby or a, uh, a passion that is not um, financially focused, you know? So maybe she has collections, maybe she enjoys reading or writing, or maybe she likes making things. She's into arts and crafts. Um, you know, these are things that are about her personal development. Maybe she loves, you know, reading a particular genre of books that actually has some redeeming quality to it. You know what I mean? Uh, number four, she should have an extremely good relationship with her family, including her parents and extended family. If she has some kind of an ongoing conflict with a family member, that's not a good sign. That probably means that she is putting her ego ahead of her relationships. And if she's doing that with family members, she will do that with you too. So you don't, definitely do not want a woman who is carrying grudges around with her or is... You just can't stand, you know, cousin Susie because she pulled my hair when I was five. Yeah, that kind of bullshit has to, has to be resolved. Any woman who prefers to be right than to be happy is bad news. Um, she should have a good relationship with both of her parents. You know, even if they're split, she should have a good, healthy relationship with them. And meet her parents. Her parents should be people of good quality, good character. Um, you definitely do not want for, to get involved with someone who has parents that are nutsy. You know, I mean, alcoholics, uh, addictive personalities, people with psychiatric disorders, all of those things are red flags. You do not want that in your life. If marriage is on the agenda, um, are her family goals in alignment with yours? Have you given some thought to what your own family goals are? And if you haven't, you should. Um, if the two of you have different view of views of family, like how many children you're gonna have, what that family is going to be like, 
um, how you're going to raise them, all of that stuff, then you're probably with the wrong girl. You need to have a single mind when it comes to how you're going to raise your family. And these are questions that are going to come up in a relationship that rarely come up on dates. <laughs> you don't go on the first date and start asking these questions. You're going to have to do it over time. You're definitely not going to be a hit if you start bringing up kids on date number one or two. Number seven, if she wants to have children, and if you are planning on having children, has she got any experience with children? The last thing you want is a woman who has an ideological view of children, or she has an idea in her head of what these children are gonna be like and what it's gonna be like to be a mom. If she wants children, hopefully she has actually spent a lot of time with children, so she knows what she's getting into. Um, a woman who just sees commercials on TV or occasionally goes to a Disney movie and sees children and thinks they're sweet and cute, she's not going to be a good mom. Chances are she's going to be in a state of shock within a few months of that first child being born. And you're going to be stuck with a, a woman who's extremely unhappy because that whole motherly role is loaded with pitfalls, you know? And you need to have a woman who knows what she's getting into. That will limit the likelihood that you're going to have a massive collapse in your relationship. Um, I cannot overemphasize how important that one is. I believe this is number eight. And this is a personal one, but I think it's very insightful. How is she with animals? So, I mean, if she's got an allergy to animals, I think I would give an exception to that. But if she's just not an animal person, that's a red flag as far as I'm concerned. Um, someone who's really good with animals, really loves animals, much more likely to be a loving, nurturing person. Someone who struggles with nurturing or loving animals is probably gonna have some other issues when it comes to nurturing children and certainly when it comes to nurturing you. Um, I think empathy is a strong characteristic of people who love animals. Um, and empathy is critical to a healthy relationship. Number nine, this is my favorite. She has a healthy internal locus of control. And that means she is very good at accepting responsibility for her own happiness. You do not want a woman who's looking outside of herself for happiness and joy, because you know how that leads. That's gonna lead right to you. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to be in charge of somebody else's happiness. I am not in that game at all. If she can't come to the relationship with a healthy locus of control internally creating happiness, then she is going to be a drag. And you do not want to spend any time with her. And finally, number 10, emotional maturity. Um, this is a big one. If you have a woman who is emotionally immature, and how would you measure that? Let's say um, she's unable to handle uh, little obstacles in life. You know, emotional maturity comes with resilience and um, the ability to adapt to situations. You know, you can take her any place and she can fit in very well with people. She knows how to handle minor conflicts and issues when they come up. She doesn't let things disrupt her state of mind very easily. You know, if a woman goes to a restaurant and they get her order wrong and she loses her shit, well, that's a red flag. That's something you definitely don't want in your life. So the reason I made this list is because when I've been posting anything positive about women on my uh, YouTube channel, oh man, all the guys come out, mostly young guys, mostly guys who have no experience with women. But it's always so funny when the young guys come out and start screaming about how evil women are and how marriage is a terrible deal. I, you guys can't talk about it because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know anything about women. If you're not gonna get involved in the relationship business, you gotta actually play the game if you wanna win. And there's a way to win. It's, the problem is, is you gotta actually work at it. Like it's not something that you can just uh, dial a girl, you know? 
and have this perfect girl show up. You're not gonna find them on Tinder, probably. Maybe you will, but if you do, you're gonna do a lot of dating to find somebody on Tinder. You're gonna have to go to the kinds of places where these girls hang out. You know, and that's me book clubs and churches and social groups and charitable organizations and um, community organizations and places where good people go. These are places where you guys ought to try hanging out. You might meet somebody nice. You never know. You might actually do something good for the community. Rather than just complaining about things, you can actually get involved and, and have uh, a positive impact on your community. So, I'm just kind of trolling you a little bit, so forgive me for that. You gotta go out there and take some risks. Meet some girls, have some fun. You know, um, be smart about it, but don't, don't just hide your head under the bed and hope everything turns out okay. It won't, it won't. That's not the way life works. Life rewards people who are bold. Life rewards people who take risks. Um, there is no safe way forward. If you get involved with a woman, there's risks. If you don't get involved with a woman, there's different kinds of risks. You may end up becoming a social outcast. You might become awkward and weird and nobody wants to be your friend because you're that guy. You know what I mean? You don't want to be that guy. Anyway, I'm just giving you a hard time. But anyway, there are at least 10, I think 10 or 11 in there. I thought I had counted 10, but I think I added one in halfway through. So there's at least 10 solid green flag characteristics that you can use um, if you're looking for a, um, a relationship with a woman where you can feel relatively confident that you can take the first stage, the first step in creating a commitment with her. Now, I'm not talking marriage here. I'm talking about just offering her some kind of an exclusive Okay, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, we're exclusive, and then go from there. If you can hit on all 10 of those, you've got a, a really solid chance that you're gonna have a great woman, a great woman, someone that you can probably build something with. Um, if you've got a couple that are missing, then I would go a very, very slow, especially that internal locus of control and that spirituality. Those are the two that probably more important than any of the others. Um, the whole family thing, you know, being good with children, really, really important. And certainly having solid relationships with her family members, extremely important. Um, those are the ones I would highlight as being like the, the critical ones. If you see those not in place, then I would probably end that relationship. And I think you can probably get to the core of those 10 issues it, during conversation over the course of the first three or four dates, you know? Uh, another thing I would do if you're out there looking for a woman is I would not attempt to seduce her or have sex with her for at least three weeks, for at least three dates. Do not even make a move on her at all. In fact, if you can go five weeks, five dates, um, that's even better because you're gonna make her insecure. You're gonna make her thinking, yeah, maybe he doesn't like me so much. Something that um, if you, are a gentleman and you play the game right, you know, you treat people with respect, um, you look her in the eye, um, you're able to hold a decent conversation, a lot of questions, you get to the core of those 10 things. At the very least, you're gonna get lucky. And if it doesn't work out, you just move on to the next one. Um, but there are some good women out there. And there are women who hit all 10 of those criteria. So don't give up just because you're, it takes some work. You know, I think you can do this. All right, you guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or ideas or thoughts, please share them in the comments. I love reading them. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay healthy. And if you can, stay single.